we want from a retirement income system? We, what we want is for everybody to have a good shot at a post-work standard of living that suits them. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. And, and that's worth keeping in mind through all of our discussion. Uh, how's Canada doing? How are we doing in terms of that measure? Um, well, pretty good in some places, not so good in others, is the general. And, and I think here is where it is important to make a distinction between low-income workers, part-time workers, and middle and higher income workers. Uh, because the way that our current system works is we do have a number of elements to the public pension system at the low worker end. And it goes beyond Canada Pension Plan. It also includes uh, OAS, Old, old Age Security. And there is also a GIS, a Guaranteed Income Supplement. Uh, when you put those pieces together and you just do the statistics, you get high income replacement rates on average. Now, I'm not saying that there may not be some gaps in there that we should look at, but let's put that in the context of whatever we do there has to be done through government assistance. We cannot ask these people at the low end to say, well, you should save more. I mean, that's just not a realistic proposition. So we look at the, the middle and higher income workers, there is a savings issue there. Let me just give you some very simple, straightforward numbers. Uh, we have about 8 million workers in Canada that are in the middle to higher income range. Interestingly, they split roughly 50-50, 4 million and 4 million, into the ones who are members of pension plans and the ones who are not. Let's talk about the group without pension plans first. 4 million people. Um, they work for, generally, private sector, mid-sized small business, and self-employed. That's who they are. And uh, there, there are two issues with this group. One relates to the adequacy of their retirement savings. Are they saving enough on their own to, in fact, get that target income replacement down the road that they aspire to? And the answer is, in some cases, yes. In other cases, no. There's an elephant in the room that doesn't get talked about very much. I think this group will appreciate it. Uh, I'm always on platform getting this in. Is that uh, there's a significant barrier for the people without pension plans who do save. It's called the cost of saving. This issue that's got a lot of press recently, we can call it solvency slash sustainability. We've seen a number of corporate pension plans, you know, Nortel is now sort of the code word for this that uh, where people thought they were getting a significant pension on retirement and it turned out to be the wrong assumption. All right, so we have a sustainability issue in the part of the system where we do have registered pension plans, mainly defined benefit plans. Position to make some significant decisions about where to go this year. It's taken us five years to get to this point as we should, because we need to get all of the ideas on the table. We need to have debates and discussions like this, because not everybody's going to agree. Ideally, we work from the same general fact base and evidence base, and then we think we need to have discussions about what we can collectively do to improve the measurable problems that we currently have with our system. Like middle income workers that don't have a pension plan. What should we do? Well, there's three things that are on the table that are being discussed, actively discussed. The first, Catherine mentioned, was the idea that they're currently, we haven't updated our pension rules and regulations in this area for 20, 30 years. And so you can't right now contemplate a multi-employer, multi-provincial plan. It's very difficult. So for crying out loud, let's deal with it. You know, let's, let's bring our rules and regulations up to, to the 21st century. It's the expansion of the Canada Pension Plan. It has a lot of merit. It uh, needs to be thought through very carefully as to how we're going to do this, how we do this. But there is also a middle way, and uh, some of you know that's the one that I've been advocating, uh, the notion of a supplementary pension plan that is bolted onto the current CPP, QPP. And that this middle way uh, is a way to get a lot of people going that currently don't have the option to save at a low cost in an expert mode automatically without having to make a lot of choices and decisions over time we have to create a mechanism for them and that's the middle way a supplementary pension plan so these are the three elements that are being discussed